Sometimes I think. Sometimes I think. <laughs> That's a shock. <laughs> My wife, uh, it's interesting that I do say, sometimes I think, and I started off way too many videos that way, um, sharing with that obvious, in a way you would say if it was a gambling thing, they, they have this word called a tell, which is a significant pattern or habit or perspective that you do when you are giving away some piece of information from your body language, you know, in some way that reveals something about your your thought, thought process. And in a way, sometimes I think is my tell of what I'm typical of saying in my colloquialisms, and colloquialisms just means manner of speech, in ways of talking. A lot of people when they are not trained or have nothing to say <laughs> or very intimidated by speaking publicly or sharing or talking in front of people, they'll say, uh, you know, the long uh, um, ums is another word, and hmm, well, this, that, you know, and there's a lot of ways that people could get over that, you know, they can go to Toastmasters, you know, and they can learn all kinds of techniques where they stand there, you know, and they have their back straight and they look out at the crowds, you know, look in the back instead of looking in eyes and, you know, I've heard all the stories, you know, I'm not quite sure about them all because I'm sure they help a lot of people and make them into wonderful speakers. For me, <laughs> I guess it's just normal. <laughs> I have a big mouth, <laughs> so I don't have that issue when it comes to ands or having long. I remember when I was taking speech one time, I had to write a speech, <laughs> and they wanted us to use you know three by five cards to tell us what we we're going to talk about. Well, <laughs> frankly, I didn't know what to do with the cards. It was kind of like, you are kidding, aren't you? <laughs> you want me to? condense my speech into cards, you know, keep a structure and outline. Quite frankly, you know, when I got saved and I realized that Jesus had said that, you know, you don't need, you don't need that any man teach you, but the Spirit of God dwells in you, you know, he will guide you to all truth, but also that you don't think about what you're to say that before you're brought before magistrates and leaders and all that, but the Holy Spirit would give you the words to speak when that time came. I thought that was heaven. <laughs> Oh, good. You mean I don't have to sit down and write some crazy kind of long outline and stick to it and act like a puppet on a string, you know, in my mind, you know, for first service, second service, third service, you know, and just repeat, regurgitate and act like, you know, it's the same message over and over and over again? Sheesh. You know, I didn't like that. So the first time I got in front of people sharing the Lord, it was just like, pew, you know, just somebody made the mistake of letting me open my mouth. <laughs> <Ta -da>! Wow. <laughs> you know, it was like, Ooh, who opened the dam? <laughs> they didn't call me back. No, I'm kidding. But I laugh at seeing and knowing those kinds of tells, as it were, or those kinds of habits that people have. For instance, my wife laughs at me because I have in video you expressions and using uh, my hands a lot, you know, to enunciate and to articulate. And she doesn't realize that I've done that on purpose in order to bring home points for the viewer to identify with me and to be incorporated or brought in because I don't have all these gimmicks that most people will use. You know, they'll have little pointers and chalkboards and all these other things. No point to that. And get your attention and music backgrounds and all kinds of weird things, you know, to try to keep you going. But for me, it was like the hands articulate as well as enunciate and bring about that hearing capability. So it brings more life into listening when sometimes people don't know how to listen anymore. And so I'm kind of glad that that um, I've had this chance, you know, to use my hands in speaking and conversation because I used to be able to just sit here and talk and I could just talk like most people, you know, I see them on the internet, you know, they'll sit there and I go, I have something to say to you and I want to talk to you right now about it and I'm going to give you a very important message starting in three, two, one, go. This is the important message, and I don't want you to be intimidated, but this is the way that I talk normally, so don't be surprised if I don't even bat an eyelid or I don't move my hips or don't move anything except my mouth. You know, I mean, hey, ick, <laughs> ah, not. So, 
Yeah, everybody has different gifts accordingly as the Holy Spirit inspires them, you know, and God bless them for what they're doing. But, you know, if I was helping them, I'd say, hey, you know what? Do you watch yourself? You know, you might want to do something a little different. You know? And I don't mean jump up and down or say, amen, brother. You know, I, I hate that expression, you know, that when people say, amen. You know, I, I never grew up with that, so it kind of irks me. So I don't use that in my normal vernacular unless I'm playing it for effect. You know, I don't usually do it in my normal conversation. So whatever I share in the Word and on video is what I share in normal life. This is the way I am. And being the way that I am, such as I am, I have to laugh because today, typical me, it just didn't go the way I planned it. <laughs> today I was had all these plants that you see around me, as well as these flying saucers up above me. <laughs> and they were all inside because it wasn't that cold last night, but it was a little chilly, you know, and I just had seen, you know, a lot of these seedlings take a hit, you know, when I was growing them. So I just decided, well, the wind was blowing pretty hard, you know, so I took my umbrella and I laid it down sideways to block the wind coming in from the north, uh, south. And uh, I have a wind block for the north, which is good. And this patio, as we've said before, is very long, really amazing, you know, and such a blessing. But I was taking all the plants in, you know, and it gave me a chance to rearrange it when I brought it back out, and I thought, well, that was cool. So it took a lot of effort, you know. It was like, I have plants in milk cartons that are containers growing vegetables like lettuce and squash and watermelon and melons and corn and snap peas and radishes and green onions and tomatoes and, gosh, a lot of things. Then I also have my flying saucers. <laughs> well, these flying saucers, <laughs> that's what they look like on camera. I mean, I don't know about you, I guess you can see the wires, right? Shh. We don't want people to get carried away about UFOs. You know, they might start a conspiracy theory about it. <laughs> Michael's teaching UFOs. But all of them are flowering plants, you know. I've grown them from seeds and they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger, you know, like bachelor buttons and some uh, morning glories and all kinds of plants that are going to really be interesting as soon as they bloom, which I can't wait. But got them around, you know, and it kind of was fun to, you know, get it all set up. But it took a lot of energy. So I was posting things, you know, and doing things, and I started to get tired. Well, then I kept trying to work it and do more and couldn't get that done. And slowly but surely, it just seemed like I wasn't getting everything done like I did yesterday. So I said, okay. Forget it. <laughs> well, let's stop. <laughs> let's not do it that way, you know, and go back to normal, which is kind of like nothing is normal. <laughs> you know, if we happen to record one video, cool. If we do five, great. You know, whatever soever that God chooses to do, that's what I want to do. And so I had a chance to just kind of like kick back, you know, and jump in the tub, you know, like I hadn't been recently. I mean, I take a bath every day, but not like just soak and enjoy. So I got a chance to kind of soak and enjoy and gradually out here it warmed up some. It's not going to get real hot today, but you know, warmed up some. And coming back out and sitting down and spending the time with the Lord, it was kind of like, wow, that was nice. This is good. I like this, Lord. Of course, it won't be the same way tomorrow. And I guess that's kind of what God wants us to know, is that, you know, though He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, things in life change. Every day there are changes going on in your body, in your mind, in your soul, in your heart, in your spirit. You see, God is at work in you to change you. He's going to make you into the image of His Son. So He's going to keep changing you. And the nice thing about it is that that means you're going to go through a process of development. And you are in the process of development. Just like I'm in the process of development. And the nice thing about it is, the one thing you can say about everybody on this planet, everyone is in the process of development. Now, they may be in a redevelopment stage. <laughs> and it may be a development project <laughs> that may take years. But the point is, until you die, you'll never arrive. So 
we really all are in process and for the most part all of us are in it together now not everyone is saved of course not and not everyone you know is going to make it so to speak you know to the end but we know that because we love that we are his and that's the way we can know whether or not we are his children or his project as opposed to anyone else's project because if we love as he loved then we know we are children of God because it says beloved let us love one another for love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God he that loveth not knoweth not God for God is love so you see first John pretty much warns us that hey you know what if you want to be born of God and prove it love is the answer it's not all we need is love it's God is love and all we need is God so quite frankly if you're born of God you love because if you don't you ain't that's the way it works so when you start looking at or considering people that are like you know kind of separating themselves and kind of pointing fingers at each other and telling each other that they're not of God or they're not children of God or they're not loved by God you don't want to get involved with those people leave them to their God and you stick with who you know God is because you know God is love the, when you shall have done all these things which are commanded you say we are unprofitable servants where is boasting then it is excluded by what law of works no but by the law of faith what hast thou that thou didst not receive what did you get that you didn't receive first now if you received it why do you glory as if you had not received it by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not works lest that any man should boast for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. We should walk in the good works that he has planned out for us, that he wants us to do, that he is working on us to do them. He is giving us our apprenticeship, and we are becoming the apprentice. Only, he doesn't tell us at the end of our life, you're fired, but rather, you've already been hired, and he will pay you at the end of your life what you're worth a penny in for a penny in for a pound <laughs> as the old expression goes but being that we are his workmanship all we need to do is let him do what he wants to do in us isn't that kind of nice he wants to love through us are you stopping him by the grace of God I am what I am and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. For of him, and through him, and to him are all things. All things come of you, and of thine own have we given you. Enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no living be justified. No living man is justified before God. You see, when God kind of decided to set up a standard of judgment, he said, I'll judge you by my son, because he I have accepted. And when he said, this is my beloved son in whom I will please, listen to him, he set up a standard with which we would probably be held accountable for. Because Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount that if we did his words, then he told us what we'd be like, the wise servant, and if we didn't, the foolish servant, and what would happen to both. So God backed up Jesus in literally making it a criteria that we kind of need to follow some law, if you want to call it that. But Jesus said they were his sayings. In other words, since Jesus said we need to love our enemies, and he said, you know, to turn the other cheek and to heal the sick, raise the dead, to 
feed the poor, to clothe the naked, to visit those that were in prison, to care for those, even your neighbor that's next door, if they should come to your door and ask for a loaf of bread, then I think we know how we ought to be. We ought to love one another. Because if he has given us this spiritual birth, this new life in him, then we can prove it by how we live it. And the way you live it isn't by loving it, but loving those that other people don't love. After all, he did say, not only to love those that love you, but to love those that despitefully use you and miserably persecute you. So you see, you can't do it on your own, but you can become his workmanship, created for good works in Christ Jesus, with which he can accomplish his work, if you let his spirit live inside you.